garage door, turning on, and the door closes. Hi guys, Ski with Pete here, hanging out with Trev down in Texas. We're setting up an outdoor garage door. Well, actually, Trevor, what are, what are we doing? We're going to put together a system that means that when I drive out of the garage and forget to close it, this thing will close it for me after, say, a minute and a half, two minutes, whatever I set it. And cool. I'm going to do that using um, a bit of home automation stuff from, uh, this is a Samsung SmartThings um, outlet, which is going to power it. And I'm going to plug it in there so that the Zigbee network knows where it is. I've already um, paired it with the network. And so I'll just let it uh, sit there while we talk. And it's uh, as we speak, it's pairing with the network. Cool. And I'm just going to add one other thing here. Yeah. Uh, this project is working with mains electricity, but Trevor is, by background, an electrical engineer. So that gives you rights to play with mains power. Uh, absolutely. For all, the kids, for all the kids out there, let's not play with mains power. We can use other methods to achieve the same results, but we'll talk about that afterwards. Okay. Yep. Yeah, 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 I, I, I totally agree. And it yeah. doesn't mean I have especially thick fingers or anything. Yeah. I, if I touch it, I get as much of a shock as anyone else. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, okay, yeah, go on. so the components are the uh, SmartThings uh, outlet, uh, into which we will eventually plug everything. Uh, we have a thing here called a RIB relay. It's actually RIB stands for relay in a box. Incredibly useful, quite inexpensive, lasts forever, and is very adaptable, which is why it has all these wires coming out of it. We're only going to use four of the six wires, but the what the wires are for is clearly illustrated on the, uh, on the product here. Okay, cool. So, um, you can't read this, but the uh, wiring code for the various pieces of wire is illustrated there. If you've used anything like this before, it'll be very straightforward. If not, you've just got to know a couple of basic things, like power goes in a couple of these, and it operates a relay which is isolated from the input power. That's really important, and this particular one does that very well because we're going to be using 120 volts, because we're in the USA, uh, to actually operate the relay, but the relay itself is going to be switching a low voltage. In fact, it's uh, 24 volts for a, um, for a garage door opener. Let me explain the wiring. These two here are the two wires we don't need. This is for if you want to operate it with low voltage, and if you want to have it as a, a normally closed um, relay, we want it as an NO, which is a normally open relay, which uses these two wires here. So this is the, going to be the DC part of it, and we don't need to apply a battery or a voltage or anything because that's already inside the garage door opener mechanism that we're going to use. Ours is a Chamberlain, but they all work pretty much the same. The AC input here, and this is, I'm, I've set it up like this purely for testing purposes to satisfy myself that it all works before I go and screw it in place in the garage because it's better to find out that it doesn't work here than when you're on the top of a ladder. Okay, so I'm going to just test it. What I have done is connected a voltmeter, an ohmmeter, to the, got it? Mm -hmm. uh, to the DC part of this, that's the relay side, and I've connected a power supply to the input. And so I'm going to plug that in there. As soon as this switch is on, controlled by the, the hub, is this in, in picture? Then the AC will operate the relay. The relay will close this connection and we can confirm that the connection is closed because the relay will swing. Let's see if it works. I'll operate it manually first. There we go, and as you see, it uh, flashed over to the other side, and then when we switched off, it goes back again. That confirms that we've connected the right wires, everything's working okay. We need a little bit more refinement, though, for a garage door opener, because what I need to do is to apply the short on these two wires for a period of maybe two to four seconds. And the way we do that is to program the SmartThings uh, hub to only have this on for three seconds. It switches it on and it switches it off. Um, if you know about smart, uh, smart things and how to program these things, it's fairly straightforward. We can show you that as a separate, uh, separate project. There is in smart things a thing called, believe it or not, garage door opener. And you just get that script and load it as a, as a, as a, as a function for your 
device and it just works all by itself. Let's test it. Okay, so um, I previously programmed this outlet to uh, work from the SmartThings Hub. It'll work from an Iris Hub or any of the other standard commercial home automation things. Um, I'm using SmartThings because I have it. So this is um, the SmartThings interface here and somewhere on here I've got a thing called uh, garage door. Um, I also have a garage door sensor there which tells me whether the door is open or closed. You can see right now it's telling me that it's closed. Oh, it's closed. Um, and so I'm going to operate this relay by just pressing the garage door button there. Oops. And so it's now switched it. I'm going to do it again with the ohmmeter in display. So there's my ohmmeter. And I'm going to press the, press the button on the phone again. And you'll see that when it switches, it closes the circuit. And then, about two and a half to three seconds later, it closes it. One more time. I'm going to do it one more time because it's great fun. It works first time. There we go. So that three second pulse will either open the garage door if it's closed or close it if it's open. How do we know whether the door is open or closed? Well, we have the sensor, which is another SmartThings uh, attitude sensor, and it shows that it's closed. All right. When we finish the project, we'll use this to show you that the garage door really does open. Okay, so having tested the basic layout, I'm going to convert this untidy bench project into something that I can is going to be safe and secure and I can screw to the garage ceiling and operate the garage door. So I'll get started on that now. Yeah, and I'm just going to say for the audience's sake, this is the Chamberlain LiftMaster Professional Half Horsepower Garage Door Opener. Uh, neither of us are garage door technicians, so don't bother asking questions about... Okay, I'm positioning this just garage so doors. it's a nice, okay. easy reach to the, uh, the thing. I'm going to be putting this into, you've got to look at the documentation for the thing, this particular model. Uh, this goes into the red and the white on the left. Two. Yeah, a lot of people have asked me in my garage door remote control that I did. Uh-huh, thanks. Uh, you know, about putting other wires in there, and uh -huh. it's, it's really not an issue to put multiple wires into the same. Well, no, but then you don't try to stick in some, like, a 10 gig or something. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, the wires that are in there just now are just uh, regular telephone wires. They're probably 24 gauge. Um, this uh, thing comes with, I think, uh, 16 gauge or 14. But, uh, so they'll, they'll go in, and you just need to make sure that you're not displacing the ones that are there already. So once you've done this, test both. Pete, would you like to just operate the, that button over there? Because what I've done is put this in parallel with that button. I just want to check that those wires are still Okay. okay. So the basic thing still works. Now we're going to plug in our new operator. I suppose I should have flies out of there. And get the phone out and see if it works. We'll give yeah. it a try. There it is. Garage door. Turning on. And the door closes. I'm back again. Fantastic. So the, uh, the wall button still works. This works, so you can control the phone from your control the door from your your cell phone, so that you could in fact open the door 
when you're coming along the road. Hmm. And also, um, I'm, what I haven't done yet, but the next step is to implement a time delay thing so that if I forget to close the door when I go out, then um, after, say, a minute and a half or two minutes, it will automatically close using this. So that's just a, a bit of setting up in the, um, in the system. I want to leave it open just now because I actually did set something up. So we'll see if it works. Okay. Thanks very much to Trevor for hosting this week's episode. Don't forget to press subscribe, like, and share this video if you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, ask in the comment section below. Check in the About section for relevant links to all the stuff that you saw in today's episode. Don't forget to press subscribe. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.